Hello everyone, welcome back to Social Programmer. I hope you guys are doing good and having a great time. Today we will be talking about GitHub, how to get started with GitHub and why to use GitHub. So let's begin. Now the question is what is GitHub? GitHub is an open source contribution platform for developers. It is generally used for project management and collaborations by multiple companies like Google, Microsoft and more. GitHub was acquired by Microsoft in 2018 and currently it has over 50 million active users. You must use GitHub if you are a coder or a developer. GitHub makes your workflow better and it is great for collaboration. You can create your own team or organization with fellow developers. GitHub has a lot of features which will enhance your skills and will surely help you in placements or to get hired. You can do a lot of things as a developer. You can store your code online using GitHub by making a repository. A repository is nothing but a kind of folder where anyone can view your code and contribute easily. There are pull requests if you want to contribute to someone's code. I brought a friend and a very amazing developer. He runs a YouTube channel named The Coders. He can make you understand these technical terms like pull requests, forking, repository in a practical manner. Alright, so now let's understand what is GitHub. So as you can see, GitHub is a development platform inspired by the way you work. From open source to business, you can host and review code, manage projects, and build software alongside 50 million developers. Now GitHub is a platform where you can host your code, you can host websites, you can host projects like you know Android apps and iOS apps, you can do anything here on GitHub. You can create releases of your desktop app let's say. Okay so basically that's what GitHub is about. You basically upload your code here, you can host it over here. Um, you can create websites over here and other people around the world can also work on your website together with you. So this is how GitHub's uh, user interface looks like once you visit uh, their website. Um, but if you're not logged in, this is how it looks like. And um, in order to create an account, you can simply just type in a username, which is basically going to be a unique ID. So suppose my name is Jagrav, so I've already created an account on GitHub. But if you don't have an account on GitHub, then you can create one for free. So I can create like idiotic boy idiot boy okay it's already taken yeah idiot boy one is available so if you want to create an account with that username you can <laughs> and then you need to put in your email address and um, after putting in your email address you can also put in a password and basically sign up for github and um, after you're logged in this is what this is how it will show you you know once you're logged in now it might not show exactly like this for you because I follow these people and this is basically showing me what they have been doing here on GitHub as you can see Hex started following Nad and um, Uday he forked from one of my repositories this guy started following me you know there's a lot of stuff that uh, you know you can see here in activities page so this is how GitHub looks like and now I'll show you how to create a new repository. But before that, I'll explain you what a repository is. And in order to do that, I'm going to show one of my personal repositories that I have on my account. So I'll scroll down here and let's check out fragments. Now, if you see this repository, um, I'll just explain what exactly is a repository. So an, a repository is basically where you host your code. So as you can see, this is my code over here. You can see um, there's my src folder, the readme.md, uh, and, and in using a readme markdown file, we basically explain other people what my project does and how my project was created and what technologies I used in order to build my project. And um, as you can see over here, I have also added the link to my project. Um, there's this, you know, small description that you also get to see, you know, um, about my project over here on about. And over here, basically, this is the index.html. You know, I have, um, like, this is the code that I wrote. And, um, you know, using services like Netlify, you can deploy this code. Deploy this code as in, have you ever thought how to make your website 
I mean like your HTML file or website and in order to do that you can basically upload your code to github and once you're done with that you can simply use Netlify to you know bring that to internet yeah literally you can actually host your code so in case you did not know how to upload your code so that even your friends your family and everybody can see around the world your website um, then for that you can use github and netlify they're like the best brothers and you know you can use them in order to basically view your code you know around the world and um, yeah so this is what how a repository looks like and um, in order to create one new repository you can either go to repo.new okay if you type repo.new it will automatically um, you know bring you to this create a new repository page on github or you can either click over here on this plus button on the um, you know beside your profile icon and you can see there's the option to create a new repository so you can always click that and you are going to be brought to the same page that you were brought to using repo.new so basically over here it asks you what you want to name your repository so suppose I want to name my repository marked parser okay or markdown parser so yeah before I create this repository I just want to show you what I'm actually going to upload so as you can see this is my story title okay I mean this is basically a markdown parser and what this markdown parser basically does is let me show you let us go to unsplash's website unsplash.com and let's take a photo for from here let's take huh, this one yeah nice laptop tablet whatever it is and I'll just put that link over here in enter story background and over here I can create like how to write good code and this is enter story desk description so basically I can type in markdown over here so I can type like this is a quote now if you guys are not unfamiliar with markdown well um, social programmer just give them a link to you know um, to teach them what markdown is um, I'll also add a header over here this is a header or h1 this is a h2 this is a h3 okay so as you can see I have written here in markdown I can write a date over here like November 25th 2020 okay by Jagrov and I can also write like posted by so now once you open this preview you can see it automatically shows you um, here in markdown see how to write good code um, you get this nice UI you guys can also check this out once I host this um, repository over here you see you can also write like a lot of code over I mean not code markdown code basically over here so I can just type over here lorem 20 and you can see I got a lot of text over here actually I need more text so what I can do is type in lorem 50 or 60 see it's a huge amount of code markdown code and I can just type it over here before the markdown paste preview you can see it's showing here I can use some other image like this one this one looks beautiful copy image address and I can open this and I can paste it over here so you basically get the idea of what I have created over here okay you can open this on your phone you can open it anywhere you know it's responsive and everything so yeah basically this is what it does it's a markdown parser and I'm going to create a repository for this you know and here's the code for the markdown parser this is the code that I have on my laptop um, I'll just undo every all the changes that I made yeah so as you can see this is the markdown code I mean the HTML CSS JS code that I use in order to create this basically over here you know markdown parser and once you're done you know with your with writing your code you can simply 
create a repository over here like I named this markdown parser I'm going to make this repository public so that anyone on the internet can see this repository and you can also commit and now I can create a repository so let's click that and once you create a new repository you can see here uh, you have this is how an empty repository basically looks like now let's start uploading all the files that we have so in order to upload all the files as you saw what I did over here I clicked on this upload an existing file okay if you click on this creating a new file then you need to write all the code over here but that's not what we want to do we want to upload it from our computer so I can just click on here upload an existing file I can click on my um, file explorer over here or instead what I can do is go to VS code and reveal in file explorer over here and I can go here um, here's and then I can drag all of these three files into this and as you can see it would start uploading it immediately index.html style.css all of them are uploaded I can now commit changes and once I commit changes you get to see that I have uploaded all my code successfully into my repository and you can see here is all my code okay you can add a readme so that you can explain people what your project basically does um, you can also write a small description over here if you want to you can also add a link to your website you know a deploy link now in order to deploy your project what you can do is create an account here on Netlify okay and once you create an account on Netlify you're going to get this UI and you can create on this uh, click on this new site from git and then you can click on this github option and you can um, you basically need to sign in with github in order to have this authorized and from here I can search for mark down parser and it should show up over here you can see that's my repository Jagro slash markdown parser that we just created I can click on that and you can see I'm going to deploy the branch main basically this is what we call branch I'm going to come to that topic in a minute so I can just deploy this site and once I deploy this site you can see it says site deploy in progress and this is literally a random website URL and you can see um, we've got this stupid website um, URL and now you guys can visit this URL in order to check this project out you know for now I've not written anything but um, you can write anything over here and it would basically show over here so yeah that's something and um, of course you can also change this the domain name you can just go to domain settings and click on this edit site name and then I, you can just make this markdown parser and then save this so you can see um, it's saved with this um, domain name called markdown parser.netlify app and when you visit that domain you can see my website basically opens and you can also you saw how it easy it was to upload your HTML files and also deploy them so that everybody around the world can see your project that's how easy it is with Netlify and um, github but also make sure that you know your index.html is named index.html and nothing else like you know main.html you cannot name it anything other than index.html or else Netlify basically what Netlify does is it looks for this file index.html and then deploys this file and this file has links to app.js and style.css you can see over here script app.js and over here um, not over here here style.css so basically this file automatically looks for the other files here on github and it automatically de deploys everything over here and that's how we get a website now I'm going to come to another topic that is branches so suppose this is the main branch that your users get to see suppose I'm a user okay I'm visiting your website on a regular basis and your website gets let's say a million views every day okay like let's say Google you know if I talk about Google Google is a really famous website of course you know about Google if you don't what's wrong with you <laughs> you're watching this video on YouTube so of course you'll know um, what Google is and you know Google even let's say YouTube you know these websites 
the, the, this is the production level website that we get to see over here. This is the website that um, you know Google developers have allowed us, the users, to see this website. However, they have other branches. Basically, it's a copy of the code. Okay, so I can create a new branch over here just by naming it over here, like let's say updates. Okay, and I can create branch updates. Now, a, what a branch basically is, is it is just a copy of the code, okay, of the main code. So suppose I deploy my main code over here, I can work on changes over here on the updates part, okay? So that while I work on my updates, um, people like, you know, like I probably right now, the YouTube developers are developing something over here on the website, but I'm not getting to see it because I'm seeing a different branch of the code. They are de developing in some other branch of the code, which is basically an updates branch, you know, which is not visible to the users. And, you know, that's how they bring updates, you know, that's how they basically updates, you know, that's what we call version control, basically. Um, more on that, it's a topic for another video, basically, because, it, you know, when you talk about version control, that's where Git comes in, and yes, Git, and github are different they are not the same they are much different and um, you know we are going to come to that topic later in some other video so yeah for now you all you need to know about branches is basically branch is a copy of the code where you can also like where you can make changes and then once you are done making changes you can merge the changes to the main branch over here so now it might sound really confusing, really stupid confusing. So what I'll do is I'm going to log into GitHub with another account and I'm going to clone this repository. So let's take this over here. Is it here? Here. Yeah. Let's close that and let's open GitHub over here. So I guess I'm logged in with my sister's account here on GitHub. So yeah, let's wait for this to open. And you can see this is my sister's account. And you can see once you create a new repository, like whoever follows you will also get to see Jagrov created a repository called Jagrov slash markdown parser. Okay, so you can also open this link over here and you can star my code. Of course, I'll star my own code. Why won't I? And um, you know, now suppose let's say if you are working on the code, let's say, and you're like, well, this code, what does it do, you know? It needs to have a readme file. I can't see like what it does over here, right? So in order to make changes to somebody else's code, you need to create a fork. And a fork is basically a copy of the code that you own yourself, a copy of somebody else's code that you own yourself. So I can just fork over here. And what fork does is it basically copies Jagro slash markdown parser and it makes another repository over here called Markdown Parser. So as you can see, this is my sister's, um, you know, repository now. And you can see it says fork from Jagrav slash Markdown Parser. And that's how easy it is to fork. You know, it's basically a copy of the code. And now what I can do is go to here, code, and I can copy this link over here. And then I can open Visual Studio Code over here. Um, let's create a new folder in my computer so I can just create a new folder called mark down parser or you know instead what you can do is just open a folder over here like web development folder and you can simply just type in oh I am in a new folder <laughs> I'll just get into this web development folder select folder Right, come on, load, load. Yeah, there we go. So you can see there's a lot of projects over here. Now what I can do is simply type in git clone and paste the link that I just copied. And basically, what git clone does is it, you know, whatever code is here on the cloud, basically on GitHub, it will bring all that code into your computer. So yeah. Now, in order to use git clone, you need to have uh, git bash installed now what is git bash well i'm going to show you of course 
you can simply download git bash from here i don't know why she's using yahoo my sister but anyway you can see you can go to this link git-scm.com slash downloads links in the description um, in order to download git bash you can download whatever version you want to download and once you download it in order to install your git bash you can just click next 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 and you know it will do its thing and once it's downloaded you can use git on your own computer so you can see it says git clone this link and then once i press enter you can see it just created a new file called markdown parser over here now i'll open that folder so i can go to open folder and i can go to web development i stored it here somewhere uh, there we go markdown parser and i can select this folder visual studio code will open for that folder as you can see all of that code that i wrote is right over here back onto my computer and now what i can do is i can create a readme file so readme.md okay oops i created readme slash md i can just delete this and i can type in again come on readme.md and you can see once you create a readme.md file this is how it looks like and i can just type in some markdown like you know this uh, like I can just type in markdown parser you know and over here I can type like let's say um, what should I type over here visit this markdown parser and this link okay and basically this is going to be our link so I can just paste the link to my markdown parser which was over here i guess let's copy this link address go here paste it here and now that's all markdown that i've written okay now what, what my sister will be doing basically is you know upload some files so since she made some changes over here let's refresh this let's go back to web development and then go to markdown parser here and you can see these are the new files that i added the readme.md you can either just drop this over here or you can just drop all of these over here you know you know in case uh, you have made changes to all of these files you know and once you add all these files you can simply click on commit changes and when you click on commit changes you can see it will create all the you know files and you can see readme.md is added and you can see a nice tiny little description is also made over here visit this markdown parser at this link see and now what my sister can do as you can see it says over here this branch is one commit ahead of jagram.main so what it basically means is that it is um, you know updated more updated than my um, than the original repository which belongs to me which belongs to jagram over here okay and over here you can see it has jagram slash markdown parser has nothing called readme.md however arushi 09 slash markdown parser has a new file called readme.md now in order to you know let jagram know that hey add this to your computer i mean to your code you can simply create a pull request over here a pull request is basically a request saying Jagra that hey I have made some changes you know take a look and if you want to add this file to your code just merge it to your repository so I can just create a pull request over here and once I create a pull request over here you can see it shows all the changes that I made you can see I created a new file over here added files via upload and it, it says this, these are the changes these are the lines of code that I've added and then you can simply click here on create pull request and um, I want to make changes to the updates branch right because that's where we want to show the code right so I can make a you know the, the, this is basically a branch the, these are basically the branches where we can you know um, pu push our code so um, Jagro's repository has two branches over here as you can see the updates branch and the main branch and Jagro would always want to, to, uh, his code to be in updates branch because you know when you're creating a website you don't want that you know there are any bugs on your website right 
you want your code to be good you want your code to have no bugs to have no issues and then you want to you know basically show it to your viewers but before you show it to your viewers you need to push all of that code into updates okay so that um, people basically you know don't get to exploit your bugs or exploit any kind of things which are basically in a beta version so yeah basically updates is like the beta version of the website and now I can simply create a pull request over here and once I create a pull request I can say added readme dot md and once I do that I can simply click on this create pull request and you can see a pull request has been created and over here it shows um, yeah, over here since we have used Netlify it automatically shows us a deploy preview basically it's a version of the website you know Netlify version of the website um, that it shows once you add something new to it okay because um, you know when I see somebody else adding code to my um, code then the first question of mine would be how does it look you know what did he or she add to the code because a person could make 5,000 lines of change and then you'd be like okay now I need to download the code and then I need to um, you know use it in my computer in order to see what it does so that's why Netlify has bots that automatically creates a deploy preview you know for every pull request made and you can simply just say uh, you can simply just click on this details over here and see what changes he or she has made but since we have added just another markdown file uh, there's going to be no changes over there on the main code now if you can see if I open um, my account over here my github account you can see I have got a notification over there you have Android notifications I can click there and you can see I have a new notification over here I can click on this and you can see Arushi09 is saying added readme.md so she created a pull request and as you can see she added a markdown basically file markdown file and I can merge the pull request now if you see markdown parser right now it does not like my markdown parser does not have a readme file right but since Arushi created a readme file for me I can simply merge her code over here merge pull request confirm merge and once I merge her pull request you can see it shows this icon and once I have um, you know once I have merged the project I mean the pull request it automatically shows here updates had recent pushes so if I go to the updates branch you can see the updates branch is a little bit different than the main branch because the main branch does not have readme.md yet because Arushi pushed into the updates branch over here if you see you can see Arushi pushed um, the new code from Arushi main to Jagra updates basically the, she pushed into the updates branch because we want to test the code in the updates branch in the beta version of the code before deploying it right and that's why updates had recent pushes and of course you know I can create a push I mean a pull request between two different branches of my own so you can see I'm creating a pull request between main and updates over here okay and now when I create a pull request you'll see all the new changes appearing so I can before I create a pull request I mean after I create a pull request you can see it basically shows all the changes that have been done it basically accumulates all the changes that have been done um, to you know our code and then we can simply merge the pull request confirm it and all the changes that were done to the updates branch are now here in our main branch see it's all in our main branch pretty cool right and I can simply now copy this link over here and I can add this over here just a markdown parser and I can add um, you know the website URL over here and I can add some topics like you know JavaScript Java's <laughs> JavaScript oops
JavaScript. There we go. And then Markdown. Oops, Markdown. And oh yeah, Markdown Editor. That's cool. Markdown to HTML. Markdown Power Set. There we go. And now I can also save changes. I don't have any releases or packages. Environment basically shows what are the languages you have used in your project. So now I can save changes. And once I do that, you can see there's a small description over here on the side. You can see what are the languages I use. You can see a small readme file over here. And you can also see all the code files over here. And of course, when people click on this button over here, I mean this link over there, you can see it automatically takes you to the markdown parser that we just created. See? Pretty cool, right? And of course, you can check this code out easily on your laptop as well, on your computer as well. And yes, you can also clone it on your way and make changes to this file. And just like that, you can create a complete blogging website with markdown parsers. Now in order to know how I made this markdown parser, I'll create a video on my own channel that you can check out later. Um, um, I also like created a blogging website over here on my portfolio. So I'll show you my portfolio. And as you can see, these are the blogs I have written. And all of this is literally marked down. And this code, even this huge code, this is written in React.js and this code is actually also hosted here on github itself pretty cool right there's a lot that you can do with github it's a really cool platform and i hope you like this video thanks for watching yeah bye now i hope you understood how to use github and how you can contribute your code to someone's repository special thanks to the coders for helping our viewers to better understand this and guys, if you really liked his explanation, then please check out his channel, link in description. So this was all for this video. I'll see you in the next one.